We good to go? Yeah, we're going. We are. <laughs> All right. Welcome, everybody. I'm Tony Pellegrino, and this is part of a live tech talk we do every Tuesday and Thursday. Starting today is now live on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So um, we're growing, we're excited, and uh, we got lots of good stuff to talk about. My favorite subject and yours, Jeeps. How to build your Jeep, how to make it better. And uh, man, it's gonna, I got a lot of good stuff to show you, um, especially for you DIY guys and gals. Um, we got all kinds of stuff to talk about today. So today we are going to cover how to build a door caddy for your half doors or hard doors for under hundred bucks. We're going to talk about the difference between RCV and regular U-joints. Um, actually, I'm gonna need Alex to grab some of that stuff for me because we did not pull that yet. And uh, a DIY alignment rack. And I think it's right outside the door there, Alex. Um, alignment tools. So um, as always, we welcome your questions and comments. You just type them in. I've got a few people here to help me read those questions and answer them for you. So I've got Debbie, Jeff, Jamie, and Alex here today in the studio with me. Just include whatever information you can so I can best answer your question. All right, and if you haven't watched this before, this is wild, man. We just chip and go here, all right? Uh, featured products today. To, no, definitely not. <laughs> Debbie wants to know if it's anything like Chippendale. No. Okay. Um, everybody's been asking about it, and it is the cage for the JL. Um, I wanted to give you guys an update. It's coming along. Uh, this is the, the general design, and I got a couple different views of it here in the tub. Um, pretty cool. Very much like the JK cage that we offer right now. And uh, here, here's a shot of the guys working on it today. They're um, ripping it all apart. They've got all the plastic ripped off. Um, we're finding there's all kinds of wires and stuff under there, things that you have no idea what's hiding under there. Um, here's, uh, that's actually Jeff in there checking it out himself. You know, as we keep peeling back layers and getting stuff off, you know, all your OnStar stuff is all loaded in there. Your day-night mirror, there's just tons of stuff um, in there. So yeah, perfect. That, and, and then can I get one with just a U-joint? Uh, maybe under here, maybe? I don't know, we'll have to find one. Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, so anyways, we're, we're making some good progress on this. By the way, actually I'm gonna back up one. Um, one of the things that we do when we're doing this process is we're making sure the factory hard and soft top fit. Um, and we're also trying to find a way to put all of the plastic coverings back on for those folks who like the way their interior looks. Um, they'll be able to get that stuff back on there. So, um, you know, we're, we're looking at doing a real nice job of tying into the, all the points on the chassis, doing the B-pillar removal for those of you guys doing uh, half doors. Just a lot of, a lot of nice stuff. So um that's that's really coming along and i'll keep updating you guys each tech talk now all the way through until it's done so lots of good stuff coming along on that for those of you that are interested in our exs suspension um it is done 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 uh please call in and talk to my guys they are um they've got pricing now they've got all kinds of information and uh, if you're interested in that we need to hear from you and uh, make sure that we're getting you the answers you need about that whole, that, that is the brand new complete chassis for the new JL. All right, uh, DIY stuff. All right, today uh, we're gonna talk about a door caddy or dolly, whatever you wanna call it, um, that, that'll allow you to put your half doors, your hard doors, um, store them easily and move them around. Um, I just built one over the weekend. Look, it's, it's not rocket science. It's just out of one inch PVC. I've got it here that I want to show you guys. 
and um, we're gonna talk about the pieces and what it takes to build one of these so you feel confident about doing that. So let's work on that right now. Alex, why don't you show them this one right now? And um, it, it's on, it's just a Harbor Freight, you know, dolly. And um, you screw it down on there and it works great. It, it holds the doors. You've got the foam between them. It's pretty nice. And um, I've got a whole nother kit right here. So now the Harbor Freight dollies are plastic. They're actually, the wheels are a little bigger and it's still only 20 bucks. So that's pretty good. And then what I did was I went and got um, a bunch of, this is schedule 40, uh, one inch PVC pipe. And I just cut it up. And uh, for those of you that are interested, I can send you a list. And Alex, I don't know if you got that slide at the last minute. I had one that was uh, like an Excel spreadsheet of this. Okay, so that's fine. It, it just breaks down all the pieces. So um, you have some that are a little shorter than others. And um, then, if I can get it out of here, you, you go to Home Depot and you get yourself some of the PVC cement and a whole bunch of fittings and you're going to turn this into a project so if you've never done this before you literally just this little thing comes out of here if i can get it out of there because i probably just glued it back in there there we go it's coming it looks like a little cotton ball on the end right there and uh, you just swipe that inside or swab it inside here and then you shove these things together and uh, you start building it, right? So when you're all done, it's gonna look like that. And then you've got these things that are for holding down EMT inside buildings and stuff. And you literally just clip this on here and put a screw in and it's gonna hold it right there for you. Then the, the finishing touch is to put the foam on everything and I used, I just got the foam where you peel this edge and then you wrap it around the tubing. So um, it just pops inside there. And uh, then I got some, you know, basic black electrical tape that you wrap the ends to just make sure it's not gonna peel off. Um, this stuff's, you know, not super durable. They sell a more durable rubber foam. This is kind of a, like a pool noodle but it's enough to protect the paint on the doors. If you're gonna use it a lot, you might wanna beef it up a little bit, but you know, all the pieces, and like I said, I can send you a little list of what that looks like, or I'll post it as part of our next newsletter out to everybody, but super easy to build. I mean, it, it probably took me 20 minutes to cut everything and glue it all together and uh, have something that I can move the doors around. And it's handy, um, so, Anyways, uh, any questions on that right now or anything we've covered so far? Okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to come over here, Jeff? You can make a little guest appearance. High and tight. We, we all got one. It's yes. summer. Yes, for Kelly. <laughs> Wait, there, you there, there you go. There you go. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, it's a uh, hundred and something here today, so yeah. it's hot and short hair is the way to go. I think within three days of us being home from our trip, we all got haircuts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had enough of mine, that's for sure. So cool. What else you got? All right, so this question was from Barack, right? Barack. Bar Baroth, Barack. Uh, about a two-door JK. Um, he would like to do our extreme kit, which is the same as the Elite, but for the two-door JK. And, uh, but he wants 3.0 coilovers and to keep his stock axles. Um, Baroth, I'd like to win the lotto too. <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. 
Um, the best you're going to be able to do is this. If you want to keep those stock axles, 2.5 inch shocks, still plenty. And uh, the max tire size you'll be able to go to is a 37. We have an example of this in a four-door version on our website in the gallery section. Um, you can go there and look at it. It's a gray JK, fully built out uh, with the stock 44s and 37-inch tires. That will be your max. It's all about articulation. I know nobody wants to go wider, but guess what? You don't want to go any wider. You can't run big tires and articulate. That's it. So, um, yeah, and if you're just talking about doing that in stages, by the way, the guy in the gray one took it because he said he never wanted to go any bigger than 37s, one trip and was back and said, nope, I want to go to 40s. So doesn't last long, I can tell you that. All right, what else you got? That's this. Yeah, yeah, I'll do the parts list for this. Um, it's, it's really simple. It has all the cut lengths and how many you buy of each little fitting and it's, uh, or I can email it out or, or send it to our group. I, hopefully these people are part of our, um, tech talk watching group. Uh, but I'll figure out a way to get it to everybody. Yep. All the people that got the tech talk shirt, the 500 people, that group. Yeah, we have their email addresses. <laughs> um, it's pretty good. You know, the, the bulk of the weight goes down. And um, by the way, you can also narrow this up so the doors you know, can't rock, but like I've got my door bags on here, which makes it about the same width as a factory door with an inner door panel. So um, that's why I chose to make these five inches wide. So the doors can move just a little bit, but um, it's, it's pretty sturdy. And um, you know, you could beef it up. You could put, uh, I thought about putting steel inside, you know, just simple formed, you know, angle corners that I could just slip inside the plastic, but it's pretty beefy. And you know what, this way, um, where's my tape measure? The dimension is not very wide. It goes through almost every door. So um, it's 30 inches wide. So like when I was wheeling it over here, I was just, you know, pushing this thing around like this and uh, it worked out great. So. Um, I did notice that, and I think I mentioned it earlier, the wheels on the new dolly are way better than this old dolly because I think these were like two for 15 bucks. Now it's one for 20, but that's a much better quality dolly. So I'm going to build this new dolly. The blue one uh, will be the one for my hard doors. And um, yeah, I, th I think the main thing is, uh, to answer his question more, is that these can't lean very hard they, they basically stand up so as long as they're standing up there's not a lot of force going left or right yeah uh we have a question from youtube okay. Zach wants to know if there's a benefit of running half doors on the trail versus no doors uh well it, it gives you a nice and you can see on these ones i've got my armrests um a nice place to put your arm and look out you know it, and it opens the the opening quite a bit from where the factory window was. The factory window is really small to try and get your head out. These really open it up. Um, the other thing is, is that, and I don't know if you can see it, Alex, but these have our, our door bags. So you get a ton of storage. That in itself is worth it. Um, the other thing that, that I always tell people when I just ran into somebody two weeks ago on the trail that had damaged their hard door, and for what it's going to cost him to fix, just go to the body shop and fix that one door, he could have bought all these. So you need to think this through. You know, you mess up those hard doors, you're talking about a very expensive proposition. Even if it's one door to go fix it, you can pay for all these in that one trip to the body shop. Lots of lot of stuff when you're wheeling and coming, shooting. From coming in, you know, whether it's dirt, mud, water, whatever, um, I did. I don't know, you know how much you follow us, but I did put on this rubber seal 
that I got from O'Reilly's. It's a nice rubber seal, so when you close the door, it's got a nice seal to it. Um, so, and if you haven't seen these doors before, these are our 3 16 aluminum doors. Um, they're really nice. They close solid. Um, they, they feel, you know, really good, um, much like a factory half door. And keep in mind, by the time, by when we came out with these, Jeep still hasn't released their half door. So um, if you want a half door in your JL, now we also offer these for the JK, we offer them for the TJ, LJ, we've got, we got a bunch of these half doors. So, um, but you know, whether you're switching from hard doors to half doors, or you just need to get your doors off because you want to work on your Jeep, um, or you want to drive without doors, this is a great way to store them. You know, you start leaning them around in the garage and the paint's down on the cement and, you know, your kid walks by and, or your dog, you know, whatever is peeing on them. Like everything happens to your doors. I'd rather get them up off the ground. They're easy to move around. You know, the, the especially your full doors are heavy. So another tip for you, before you take off your doors, roll the windows down. It lowers the center of gravity so that they're not going to be as top heavy when you put them in this caddy. So... All right, what else you got? Uh, so we've had several viewers um, ask for a parts list on that. So on the, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm, if you're on Facebook, I'm there. Um, you can just message me, you know, through Instant Messenger, your email address, and I can shoot it right over to you. Um, the, I was gonna tell you, when you look at my parts list, I was able to do this whole thing for $84 from Home Depot. So if you can price shop a little bit, you might be able to find, you know, some of the supplies a little cheaper. Um, this is Harbor Freight. Yep. Okay. Harbor Freight is where I got mine. Um, you can, heck, you could build your own. Or if you don't want it to be on wheels, you can just set this whole thing right on the ground. You know, if, if you got a little corner in your garage or something that you um, don't mind. And after I built mine, I needed to get my doors from home to the shop. So I just put it in the back of my truck and, and that worked out pretty good too. So if, um, if you're going to transport them like this, I would recommend putting a strap over them like right here. Let me turn it a little bit. Right over the middle. You know, and that'll really keep this stuff. And it could be simple. It could be a bungee. It could be a Velcro. It could be just about anything. But, you know, if you do that, it's going to tighten everything up and really keep it um, quite nice. So, all right. And I just don't have my door bags on my half doors yet on the, on the rears. So that'll tighten that up in the dolly as well. So, all right. More questions? at your shop and what happens to the old factory frame is there a market to sell the chassis oh yeah okay so um when somebody brings a jeep here um it's it's never as simple as hey guys would you just swap out the frame you know it turns into i want fenders and bumpers and rockers and a roll cage and blah 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 blah, blah right they, they end up wanting a lot of stuff if you just said switch the chassis uh, we could probably do that in one week, uh, one five-day work week time because we literally just pull the body, move the drivetrain over, put the body back on the new one, and uh, connect everything, and it's ready to go. So it can be very fast, but you start adding that other stuff. You know, a roll cage is a week in itself, maybe two if you want it powder-coated. Then, um, you know, you start adding on other things, and that adds additional time. So just keep that in mind when you're – Typically, we have one tech work on your vehicle. So um, it's not like I can put five guys on and they can do five different tasks all at one time. They're bumping into each other. They're in the way. Something's going to get scratched. We don't do that. It's one guy. So, uh, but great question. And then regarding your old chassis, throw that thing away. But um, you, <laughs> I say that jokingly, you can take it down or list it um, at your local body shop because people are crashing these things all the time. And um, some of the older JLs now, you know, from 2018 are, um, you know, some of them need frames. So you could certainly sell the frame you have that's underneath your brand new Rubicon. So, yeah, I mean, I, honestly, every single thing I took off my JL, um, 
I was able to sell the axles. I sold those for five grand in one day. I sold the tires and wheels. I sold, you know, every single thing we've taken off that thing. So there's lots of uh, value to all those parts. So don't, don't just throw them away. That somebody wants them. Somebody had a mishap somewhere and they're gonna want that. So more questions? Uh, yeah, Donald Muller, 2018 JLRU. Uh, would the new Genrite roll cage be able to accept the best top Sunrider for card top or at least offer it as an upgrade? Um, that's, we're still trying to figure out that top in particular. Um, so what I got to do is I've requested one from best top and uh, we'll see. We, we see all the mounting holes for it. So we're trying to figure out if we can duplicate that in our cage. But one of the things about Genrite is that we take all that into account. You know, we make sure that all the factory seat belts will work. A lot of that plastic can go back in. Um, you know, all of your sun visors, um, hard and soft top. You know, we're, we're trying to make sure that you can still keep a lot of your factory comfort features um, that, are, that are important to a lot of people and still have the upgraded roll cage. By the way, that factory roll cage is half the thickness of the cage we'll be putting in. So um, it's quite a bit thinner. Yeah. What else you got? Or Jeff? No? Okay. Keep those questions coming. I got lots of answers if you can't tell. I'll, uh, I'll move on to yeah, the next slide. Going. Okay. All right. So your door dolly or door caddy, I'll get people who need the list, or the parts list for that, and you can build it yourself. Okay. This is a super popular question. What is the difference? And, uh, you know, I'm sorry because I take it for granted that everybody knows what the difference is, but I happen to, you know, deal with this stuff all the time and have my hands on it. So let's get that stuff out of the way. We're going to bring up a couple different pieces here. So sorry it's dirty, but that is a standard U-joint. And um, the way that it works is it's got little bearings inside here, and I mean little needle bearings inside there. Now, this, this has been the way things have been done for a long time. I mean, you, I, don't, I don't want to say 100 years, but a long time. Um, these, some are greasable, like this is an upgraded CTM or Yukon. Uh, this one's a Yukon. So um, these are greasable and, um, you know, these are really nice. They, they, they last a long time and uh, they can be very strong, okay? So you can see as you, you roll, right, the axles turn, that U-joint gives the, the power, the ability to transfer out to the wheel and uh, you're able to, to keep going, right? Very smooth. Okay, on one of these, let's see if I can get this off. It's tight. <laughs> see if I can. Oh, that's not gonna work. Um, let me look at my drawer here for a pry bar. Or something. Let's see if we can get this off. Wow, that baby is on there. Um, yeah, I want to show them the inside, Jim. Do you got one open? Okay, Jamie's gonna go look for one. But the way that uh, CV, so so this one happens to be made by RCV. They're known for their orange boots, right? They make a very, very high quality unit. This is all one piece. And uh, inside, um, there's a CV, which is, you know, normal on a lot of high-end European automobiles, um, but it hasn't really been utilized in this kind of an application. This is also super popular on all the new um, UTVs, you know, um, side-by-sides. A lot of people know them as razors and stuff. So um, those, are, those are popular. I'm going to stand on this and see if I can get it out. Yeah, that. Okay. 
Okay, so Hoover, I don't know if you can zoom in on that. And this one's super tight. So inside here, there's large, very hard. These are probably 3 8 or 7 16 diameter ball bearings that go all around here. And it allows this intersection to turn. And um, it, it does the same thing as this, but it does it in a way where you've got a constant pressure, hence the constant velocity, velocity CV. That's what it's short for. So as you turn, now the other thing is that it can typically turn further than this. Here comes Jamie. He's got one that we can, yeah, that we can handle. All right. So this is, and this is a bigger one. This is the comparable size to this right here. So inside here, you can see these deep grooves where the balls roll. Then there's the cage and this center, they call this a star. And the balls drop in here and then this whole assembly goes inside and then this rotates. So as you turn, you know, this is rotating around and you can, it's very smooth. It, you know, you can see it's very greasy, thank you. Um, but again, it was one of the questions asked on our survey, what would you like to see? And people said, I want to see the difference between a U-joint and a RCB. So hopefully that answers a lot of questions. Do we have any questions coming in online? Okay. Um, okay, what, on this? Okay. Um, all right, Jeff, why don't we go with you and let's see what we got. Tony, if you were to pick a gear for a JKU, OH, 2016 to set a full build, weak chance of setup, etc. Does it make a difference? On years for fabrication, parts, availability, or inside info, you've learned and can share. I know your current moto is a 2014 or 15. Any particular reason you went with that year? Okay, so if you couldn't hear that, the question was, what is the best year to choose on a JKU? Uh, to build out with our full elite suspension so the only question i would have for that gentleman is is he keeping stock engine or is he going to do a v8 upgrade so i'm going to answer both ways if you're going to keep the stock engine and transmission you need to start with a 2012 or newer so 2012 to 2018 rubicon okay make sure you get a rubicon that's that's another i don't talk about a moab or a safari or any of that crap get a rubicon okay because you get the four to one transfer case even though you're going to throw away the axles or sell them off or whatever you're going to do um, you want the rubicon transfer case if you're going to do a v8 swap you can get any year you want okay now if you're going to do it like terramoto where you're going to like gut it and go full on you can get any year you can get a salvage title you can get anything you want okay like all you need is a shell because you're not starting with much more you're going to replace everything Okay, so that's cool. So then, you know, you can get um, the older years, you'll be able to pick up cheaper, and I would even consider a salvage title. Yep. You know, just, I mean, I've seen people buy them for five grand. We, we bought one here that I'm working on. I got the whole Jeep for eight grand. So, um, but it's an older, you know, it's, it's that 11 and older. So, but, so what? You're gonna put a V8 in, who cares, you know? And uh, that's a great question. I, I, I'm surprised we don't get more of that, so. Okay, yeah, let's see what we got. So, uh, part of it is it's more expensive. It is more expensive to build it this way. This is, you know, there's when you go to a drive shaft shop, this is the way it's been done forever. And uh, they've got a huge selection of the end pieces that they weld into a piece of tubing. And remember, you've got the slip and all the other things. So the drive shaft guys are kind of equipped to build them with a standard U-joint um, or, you know, what we know as the CV and a drive shaft, which is a double carbon style. So, by the way, you're, if you've got a newer Jeep, if you've got a, you know, 07 to current, right? It, it does come with a drive shaft that has this in it. Um, by the way, those, instead of that nice orange boot, they had a little rubber boot that when the boot split, all the grease fell out and then uh, sparks started and the Jeeps started on fire. So 
Um, it's also the reason why the moment you go past a two inch lift on a JK or a JL or a JT, you've got to replace the drive shafts because that little rubber boot, when it runs all the time like that, will split and then your uh, drive shaft U joint is gone. So, um, the other thing to keep in mind is um, if you look underneath your Jeep, the drive shafts are huge. When they, when they do the CV style, they're huge. When you do um, the U-joint style, they're very small. So that just keeps it out of the rocks. So they're, they're all considerations, you know, um, and these are great questions. And a lot of the time, what I would tell people is go over to our gallery, look at the list of parts that I've, I've got listed for my Jeep Terramoto and not a single thing on there is by mistake. I mean, not a single thing, not, not even the visor, okay? Every single thing I chose, it has a specific person, purpose, it is the best money can buy. And um, those, are, those are really important aspects because that's the vehicle that I've gotta go out and make sure runs all the time. That's the vehicle that I finished King of the Hammers in. And uh, anything that's on there is something you need to really seriously consider for your vehicle. Run RCDs on Terramoto. So I just got them. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the question was, do I run RCVs on the Terramoto? The, the set that I was just prying apart is the brand new set that I just got. Like this, this 300M beautiful work of art axle that I'm going to shove in there. Um, that's also brand new. So um, I'm, I'm very careful uh, as somebody in the industry not to ask for too many parts, too many free parts. You know, there, there's so many people with their hand out um, looking to build their vehicles. And unless I've got something that's broken or not functioning, um, then I, I don't say anything. But um, in my race car, in my Ultra 4 race car, I have run RCVs like since day one. So... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm a huge believer in those. It's a American made high, high, high quality product. Like I said, you know, when, when you get to see one of these up close and look at the finish, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. So yeah, really, really nice. These, you know, tend to look very archaic. You know, you can, you can see, I mean, this one's used and it's dirty, but they're, they're just kind of, you know, archaic looking. Yeah. Yep. Terry Wick if you can put those on the JT. Terry Witt, yes. So um, Terry, the RCVs are available for the JL or the JT. And by the way, when you upgrade to the RCVs, you eliminate the, the front axle on a JL and a JT is a two piece deal. You throw that away and you get a one piece front axle. Uh, much stronger, much better way to go. Um, that will require a programmer like a uh, taser mini to turn off because otherwise your Jeep's going to be looking for where where did the little thing go I'm not getting the signal that the shafts connected so there's a couple of things you'll have to do you're going to want one of those anyways because you can turn off a whole bunch of other stuff that's probably bothering you like the start every time you or stop every time you come to a, a stoplight so um, nice nice little product yep and Esther Parrott Newcomb asked what would cause wear marks on the RCV axles? Um, so a, a couple of things. Um, I'm not sure where you're talking about wear marks, but I'll, uh, I'll show you this. Let's move this dude out of the way. So typically what happens is, you know, you get your RCV, it's brand new, it's brown like this. It's a, this is a coating to keep it from rusting. And um, obviously, you know, where it goes into the differential, there's gonna be wear marks on the splines. But this section right here, this smooth section is where the seal goes. So there's a seal that runs here and you can see it on this axle right here. So you can see a little bit shinier area and that's where the seal rides. And that seal is what's keeping the differential fluid inside by your locker. And um, that's very important. You can see here, you know, there, there's nothing else, no other scratches or anything. There's even some writing on here that are nothing else wears, but you've got to have that smooth seal surface and uh, you'll see that get polished. And that's probably what she's talking about. If it's something different, just write back in and let us know. All right, what else we got? Paul wants to know if you have any updates on the Ford's 
pretty much spot on target. <laughs> so Matt's asking about uh, if I know anything more about the brand new 42 inch Mickey Thompson Baja Boss MT. Um, I do know that uh, the equipment, they, they had to buy brand new equipment in order to make the tires. The equipment has now made its way to the factory. They're installing it right now. And as soon as it's operational, they will be able to give me a hard and fast date on when we would have those. So um, I know that they're, they're pushing hard to make that happen. Keep in mind, they just released that brand new AT, which we put on uh, my 2500 pickup truck love it and um it's a good looking tire if you haven't seen it check it out we we've, we've got them on our website and you can you can find that on there along with rcvs and everything else we've talked about today is all on our website so what you got off topic. okay hey tony i have a 2005 pga if i run high spear fit from you guys will i run into clearance issue with my anti-rock sway bar front clean assist um you'd have to look at where the the little rods are that connect it we, we call them links the the sway bar links and uh, which is different than the sway bar arm so chances are if your steering right now isn't interfering with those links you're probably okay um, when you convert over to our steering on the dana 30 you're going to drill out the taper to 5 eighths, um, and that's a little bit tricky. You might even want to, if you don't already have a 5 eighths drill, you can get what's called a 5 eighths reamer, and that, that's a little bit easier to go through there and uh, without catching and jerking the drill out of your hand. Um, and then you can put the tie rod on the bottom of the arm or on the top of the arm, whatever your vehicle has more clearance for. But um, look at our 5 8 chromoly high steer kit would be the best one for you. That, by the way, that's a do-it-yourself kit that does require you to cut the tubing, weld in the bungs. You know, there's, there's some work to be done there, but you're getting all the right parts. You're getting all the right uh, grade 8 hardware and FK Himes and the whole thing. So uh, great question, though. You, but you do, you know, anything with your steering, you've got to cycle it and check it. Um, to me... I'd rather get the steering and do away with the anti-rock myself, but um, that's for you to figure out. <laughs> okay, what are the what other questions we got? Uh, oh, yep, I asked earlier. Yep. Um, can you put 35-inch tires with 3.0 shocks? Uh, maybe, maybe. That's... Uh, um, I'll tell you what, call in and uh, talk to one of my guys, give them your name, email, everything. And what I'll do is I'll talk to my engineer and we can put a 35 inch tire on and CAD and cycle it and, and take a look at that. But Ah, uh, gotcha. So yeah, it, it might work. I mean, your chances are pretty high that it would work. So the other thing to think about is even if it touches, it's only going to be, you know, for a second at articulation, right? A straight up and down bump, no problem. It's going to handle that all day long. So, and the 3.0 is nice. That's for sure. Ask Debbie. She loves the, the yeah, JL with the 3.0. <laughs> she says they're nice and smooth. <laughs> oh, like good sketch. Now she's getting all spunky. I did hear today from the engineer on that project they are very close and uh, the reason I got that call was because they were checking to see if I wanted one I'm like uh, yeah so um, yes but the, the, so if you missed the question um, was how close is advanced adapters on having an Atlas for the JL and JT. And uh, I got a call from them today. They are close. And um, yeah, I I'm excited. I, I saw a prototype of it when we were at Easter Jeep Safari at the uh, end of March. And it looked really nice. It's uh, a lot of what they're doing right now is based around trying to get it in the factory um, center console. So um, it's great. Just like I know I ask everybody to be patient for stuff. They've been asking for everybody's patience too. So 
Um, I, I know it's when you get your your new toy, you want to play with it. So I, I totally get it. Um, sometimes, okay, so the, the question was, um, she feels like her harnesses are too high and the, the, the belts are cutting her neck. Um, there's a couple different ways to deal with that. Um, one is, um, you can separate the two sides and we do that with weld on rings and those weld on rings can go on the top of the tube, on the back of the tube or on the bottom of the tube. So um, that can help, depending on the size of your tube, typically it's inch and three quarter, it can move the height of your seat belt almost two inches. So um, those, are, those are found, um, we don't sell them, but it looks like the end of an eye bolt that's been cut off and you just weld it on. Um, and then that way you're not drilling more holes. So um, I don't know which way the hole was drilled in your cage, but you could also look at, is there a way to wrap the seatbelt from the bottom to help get that lower? Um, if you want, you can instant message me a picture of what you have and I can make a much better uh, suggestion for you. You did ask me that already. Yep, that's okay. 42 inch boss, everybody wants it. Oh. Uh, okay, so the question, man, we're, we're getting all caught. Jeff's caught. Jeff's like, huh? I'm listening. Um, so the question was, how are we doing on our TJ to LJ kit? We, we haven't even, have we shown that? No, we haven't. We should. It's it's totally badass. We'll show it on Thursday. Um, it's a super nice kit. It not only does it extend the frame, it converts it to coilovers. It is an all aluminum interior. And um, we've had several versions of it in, in prototype form that uh, we've test fit here. One of them is on Jamie's Growler version 2.0. So, um, but I saw new versions come in and were being test fitted by our engineers. And um, I know I, I sat in on a meeting earlier today where they were working on it. And our next step is to actually install it on our own Bowtie TJ. So I think what's gonna happen is um, that'll probably happen if I'm lucky the last week in June, us install it here, then um, if everything goes smooth, then we'll be able to offer it um, to the public as a, a kit. So I would say like availability is probably four to six weeks out before, um, you know, roughly. But if you're interested in that call, get your name on the list with my guys. Because what happens is I walk in and go, all right, who's been asking about this? Call them back and tell them it's ready. Um, those are the first people that get notice. So if you are interested in that, please call in and talk to one of my guys. Okay, what do you got? Higher limit size on 35 and 40 spline. Ah, great question. Okay, so uh, many, many times, these are, by the way, these are both 35 spline. Oh. <laughs> the question was how big of a tire or what is the limit of the, the size tire you can run on a 35 spline or 40 spline axle. So um, there's a couple of different considerations. Um, and and I'll, I'm gonna start by saying this. First off, I raced King of the Hammers on 42s with 600 horsepower for years with a 35 spline axle just like this, okay? So it is possible and it will hang together. Um, a lot of it depends on where you use that power, how you use that power. If you're gonna drive like a rock bouncer and just pin it and hope for the best, you can probably break anything, okay? So that said, if, uh, if you're on 35 spline and you're running a 40 inch tire, on the front, you're probably fine, okay? Uh, we're recommending now for guys on a 40, 
40 inch tire to run a 40 spline rear axle and you will never have to think about it okay that's what i run in the race car with 800 horsepower now and we just stand on it at full throttle and we've never even twisted one so um you know once you move up to that 40 spline you are you're really good so um and depending on where you get your 35 spline shafts if you notice on this one how it's it's turned down a little bit in the middle um what that does is this axle shaft acts a little bit like a sway bar where when it twists it'll flex just a little bit here in the middle and there's no stress risers everything's very smooth and that's how you keep an axle alive um, the good axle manufacturers really know how to do that. I mean, this, this one's been polished and plated. And I mean, this is, when you see something like this, this is super high quality. That's going to last for years. Um, you'd have to do something really, really stupid to break that. Like if you drop your tire completely in a hole where, where the tire, you know, when it's aired down, it gets captured by rock. And then you just stand on the gas at low range. You can break an axle. You can break anything. Once you grab onto that tire, something's got to give, right? So it could be the U-joint, it could be the axle, it could be the drive shaft. There's a lot of stuff that could go. Typically, it's the axle. So think about this. You know, the, the power reduction, right? It comes out of the transfer case, down the drive shaft, into a gear set in the differential, which is 5.38 to 1, right? So the, the drive shaft turns five times before the axle turns once. So that's a lot of torque. And, um, you know, especially when you back that up with pretty good horsepower, you know, you're, you're talking about pushing things to limit. So um, hopefully that answers the question. But uh, 35 and 40 spline are, are the standard now for sure. Yeah. And when you put the transfer kit build on your photo gallery page, all the bench seats are eliminated. Is that a must or is it possible to keep the bench with the roll cage seat? Ah, great question. So the question was, um, on all of our tracer builds, the people have elected to remove or omit the rear seat. Um, but it, that is not necessary. A lot of the guys have put the fastback cage in, so we tell them right away, we don't want them running a rear seat if they're running the fastback cage. But recently, um, we finished Andrew's pay dirt. He's got a back seat. And um, Shamrock, the silver, um, he had a back seat too because he's got a full cage. So it, it, it's not a requirement of the tracer. Great question. Um, it just happens to be that a lot of the people that are spending that money are kind of viewing themselves as like more of an advanced two person crawler just by chance, just 100% by chance. So good question though. Deb, you got something? Uh, off topic question. Sure. Kevin Kerwin has a 97 XJ with a six and a half inch lift. Due to the angle of the track bar mount to axle, I have to use a high style joint on both ends, but they squeak really, really loud. Do you have any suggestions for a particular brand that might be better to use or for alternatives to high joints that still allow for misalignment? Yeah, so um, Curry makes what they call a Johnny joint, and uh, you can get this in a weld on version or it comes in a variety of shank sizes that thread in just like a Heim. Um, this on one end, which would be the frame side, would cure a lot of that. The other thing that I would do is I'd probably drop that uh, track bar mount on the steering box side. Um, you still have to match it to where uh, the Heim is on your drag link, which would be off your pitman arm, but um, this would eliminate a lot of that noise. Now, you could also get if you buy a high quality um, Heim, and this just has a little coating on it, um, they sell this with a TPFE coating. Okay, it's a Teflon coating on the ball, and um, that will allow this to operate for quite some time um, quietly. Okay, now there, there's a caveat there. That coating, if you're in mud, or sand, right? Basically anything like sandpaper that's gonna wear off the coating as it's going round and round. Well, then the, the coating's gonna be gone. Actually, anything will be gone. It'll start wearing the metal, right? So um, so just keep that in mind. You could, you could stretch 
you know, a balloon or a rubber or something over this thing. I mean, I've seen all kinds of stuff trying to get more life out of these. But I'll give you a quick tip. If you take, um, in fact, I'll show you right here. Get yourself a little oil can and you put one drop of synthetic oil on that ball, it will not squeak for a long time. You do it on both sides, rotate it around. Um, if you have to, if it's in your vehicle, rock it back and forth, you know, take it around the block, put a couple drops, you know, around on it. I'm telling you that thing will get quiet and you'll stop going out of your mind. So um, that, that's the last, do it right. And then you can still do this. All right. What else we got? Josh Martin, 2008 JKUR stock axles with 5.38 gear, 37 inch tires, two and a half inch spring lift. Front drive shaft went out this weekend. Should I replace with 1310 or 1360 drive shaft? Ah, uh, very good question. Okay. Uh, what size tire do you say? 37? 37. Okay. So I would recommend that you stay with a 1310, and here's why. The 1310 will be your weakest link in that entire front drive line, even the rear, okay? And if you look back at my old growler, back when I built it with a V8 and on 42s, I kept 1310 U-joints in the drive shafts too, because if it breaks and it would be the weakest link, that is the best way to go. It's the easiest thing to fix right there on the trail. They're cheap. You put a brand new one in, you're ready to go. You beef that up. You go to 1350, the next thing that's going to break is going to be your pinion or a tooth off the, the ring gear or the axles or the U, the U joints, you know, out at the end of the axles. You're, you're guaranteed you're going to break something else. A 1350 is a lot stronger. So I would stay 1310, carry a spare. Either, either a whole shaft or the piece that keeps breaking, whatever that is. Um, but you, trust me, you'll be a lot happier in the end keeping uh, something you can easily service available to you. So great, great question. I don't get that very often, that's for sure. I, maybe once since we started the show. What else you got? Uh, Terry Wick, who earlier asked if he could put those on the JT, he, yeah. he asked a second follow-up question, would I need to re-gear? Oh, no. Um, so the, the question was, if you upgrade to an RCV um, or any axle shaft for that matter, um, do you need to re-gear? Absolutely not. Um, what happens is, is when you go to order, they're going to, you need to find out the spline count and, uh, or they may know, you know, if they have it listed for your year Jeep, they're going to assume you still have the stock carrier and they know how many spline, typically it's 30 spline and uh, they'll send you shafts that'll just plug right in there. And uh, that's a great way to go. They'll be the right length and everything, and it, it'll be a, a pretty simple fix. If you're, if you're really handy, if you worked on cars quite a bit, changing an axle shaft um, is, is a good, solid job. If you're not used to working on cars, take it somewhere, because that's a pretty big job for average persons. You know, um, just keep that in mind. Because when you pull the axle shaft out, fluid gets in the tubes, right? Unless you've drained your... Your differential fluid um, so that means you know you got to pull the cover drain it be able to put that fluid back in right it's a I would say it's probably an all-day job to swap out a set of axles to RCVs or something else so just keep that in mind Ron Huffman asked if the RCVs are rebuildable they are in fact um, I know RCV gears guarantees them not to break because they're pretty confident that you're gonna roast the ring and pinion before they break their axle so, um, but this whole thing is serviceable. So that's, that, that's actually where Jamie got this one because Jordan is next door servicing his. And um, what you can do is buy the new pieces that go inside, including the balls. And uh, then you just re-grease it and put them together. If you're not a do-it-yourself kind of a person, you can take the whole thing, ship it back to RCV, They'll rebuild it for you and send it right back there. Obviously, there's a charge for both the shipping and the rebuilding, but totally rebuildable, as is one of these. So, you know, these are great. Once you break it, then it's toast. But if you service it before it breaks, you're in good shape. Yep, Jeff's got one. 
Daytime Express long arm kit. They want one eighth of shock shaft going in the rear of my 05 CJ, bot uh, bottoming out the shock. Is there a fix for that? Okay, so the, the question was, he's got an 05 TJ, but he only has one inch of shock shaft showing. And he's bottoming out, yeah. and he's looking for the fix. Yeah. So um, there's a couple of things he could do. He could, uh, is, is the, the shock, is it an aftermarket shock that's longer than it should be? Because that, that shouldn't be the case. So what, what a common thing that happens is, is people... You know, they go, I want more travel. So I'll just put on an 11 inch travel shock instead of the nine inch that the manufacturer recommended. Um, so you gotta be careful. You know, if you start mixing and matching parts, um, that's that's why they package their kit with a shock that, uh, now sometimes I know people go, well, down the road, I'm gonna go with the three inch lift. So I'm just gonna buy those shocks now. So I don't have to buy them again. Well, the body's longer, right? So that's why you have so little shock shaft showing. So you got a couple options. You could cut off the lower mount. You could rotate it down and weld on a new one. Um, that, that is possible. That'll give you some more shock shaft showing. You do not want that thing bottoming out. Um, if you let the shocks control, the, the, and that's what you're bottoming out on, I guarantee you, you're going to break the upper shock mounts or the lower shock mounts or the bolts off. Okay, it's, it's only gonna take like 10 or 15 hits like that and that, that shit's gonna be broken, okay? So the, in the middle of your coil springs, there's a rubber bumper or sometimes it's EVS foam. That bottom out needs to be doing the bottom out work, okay? That's what it's made for. It's right on the center of the axle. That is what's designed to do the bottoming out. If you let anything else in your vehicle take the load of bottoming out, I guarantee you that thing's gonna be broken soon. So definitely do not let that happen. Cut those mounts off, get longer mounts, remount them, do, do whatever you gotta do, or just change the shocks and uh, that are more appropriate for your level of lift. But uh, typically on a TJ, sitting on a lift like that, you should have three or four inches of shaft showing. So, and by the way, that should match what you got on the bump, right? So it's really easy to just, Look under there and go, bump stops right here, shock shafts right here. They should be really close to each other. Okay? Sure. Will the 42 inch be for a 17 inch wheel or only a 20 inch Ah, so the question was, will the new 42 be available in a 17 inch wheel or a 20 inch wheel? The good news is I told them to make both. So. Um, I know the 17 will be first, but the 20 will follow shortly thereafter. So, yes, great question. And Shane said, JKU with a leaf suspension. I do have a one inch body lift because of the new exhaust. Uh, if he's got the Elite with our 70 inch wide axles, right? If he's, if he's done everything our way, then yes, the 42s will fit. You are going to have to get your jigsaw or saws all out and do some more clearancing. It's a bigger tire. Um, but I'm telling you, a 42, putting a 42 on your vehicle is like the first time you got lockers. It is a huge advantage. Um, you, you will go up and over stuff that you never imagined or, or with incredible ease it is amazing because every hole out there is dug by a 37 or a 40 inch tire and the 42 just manages to go right through so you you will be impressed it by the way um you know if you got power and you're just throwing 42s on something else is gonna start taking some wear and tear like your shafts so just just it, it's like the guy who had 37s that just moved to 40s, there's more wear and tear. Well, now you're that guy going to 42s, so just be mindful of that. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Jason asks, wants to know Jason. if will be available in 50. Oh, oh, the 42. 42. 42. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. That's what, so they're making those for us for racing first. So, of course, we get the sticky one first. And then the DOT version will come out after that. Yep. Jeff's got Very one. off topic. Very off topic. Uh, talk a little, about, a little bit about the Edelbrock Supercharger for JLJT. You drove one or two weeks ago where you joined yourself. Do you know if it's a viable power adder? 
Okay, so the question was, um, we a few weeks ago or a month ago now, um, I drove one of the Edelbrock supercharged uh, JLs, and uh, it was pretty impressive. It's in in fact, it was impressive enough. I remember thinking, a regular person should not have this much power because you can go really fast on the street and not realize like it's so smooth and it doesn't have like where you take off and then it goes raw it just right from the start it was like smooth and powerful and the next thing i you know i'm on a city street that's got a 45 mile an hour speed limit and i'm going 90 like it's smooth and fast so I, <laughs> so um i i definitely was thinking you would not want to throw your teenage kid the keys to your jeep or they'll wreck it for sure so great product um you know, they, they have extended the warranty. You know, they, they feel really good about it. Um, I don't know that it's something, I, that it, it's not something that we can't sell. We, I just haven't listed it on our website or anything, but um, I, it's readily available. So, you know, if, uh, you know, it's, it's a viable option. It's, it's probably the only supercharger I've driven that I think is a viable option. I've driven some of the other ones and you couldn't even crawl a rock without the thing like, boost coming on and like launching over the rock you know i'm like well that doesn't work you know so um before i take another question i do want to cover one more thing on the regular program that i haven't gotten to and that is our new alignment tools so this is sold as a pair right you'd get a pair of these you bolt them onto your axle you straighten it out and you measure between them um the, the nice part is is that um when you measure between them sorry alex i'm going to move over this way. When you measure between them, you can measure on the front and then you can measure on the back so you can see what the difference is. So you can tell I've got, you know, an eighth inch toe out or toe in or whatever that is. They do, yeah. And uh, if you go on our website, these are already on our website and they show that the, the hub, the front hub goes through here. Um, this fits a uh, Five on four and a half, five on five and a half, and six on five and a half bolt pattern right now. Um, so these are just lightning holes. They don't really do anything, but the, the point is, is that you measure out at the tips and uh, this gets it far enough away so that you can get by everything and get a actual straight shot measurement. Um, they're $59 a pair. And uh, if you're that DIY guy, it'll be a huge help. And uh, like I said, those are on our website. And uh, if you get a chance and you're that guy, check them out. You will find them very handy. All right, the next thing I wanted to mention before we get into it uh, was I, I recently fielded some questions on Johnny Joints. Uh, Rock Jock, who, who manufactures these, um, when they assemble them, there's a little clip in here. So the, the urethane is a two-piece thing around the center ball and then they pop this together and put the C-clip in. They use a very lightweight lubricant to assemble this product. It is not pre-greased from the factory. So you have to grease these um, when you go to use them, okay? So after you assemble your vehicle, you need to get the grease gun on there. Any molly base grease is acceptable. Now, I will forewarn you, um, when you use a grease gun, it can apply a lot of pressure, especially if you use an air actuated one. Um, it will, um, you will see grease kind of shoot out around the ball. And sometimes um, I grab the link and I rock it back and forth and kind of make sure that everything in here is loosening up so the grease can actually travel around. There's a little labyrinth in there that goes around the ball to make sure that there's lube. Um, if you get crazy with your grease gun, you'll actually see part of the urethane deform so you don't want it you just want a couple of shots of grease in there you want to wiggle it and make sure that it gets some lube around the ball and by the way you'll notice like it'll, it'll go from like sticky to like ooh, moves nice you know so um yeah so definitely another tech tip on that that um, i wanted to get in before because we're, we're already running pretty long but i'm happy to keep going so what are the questions uh, you got anthony Tanquette. Um, no, um, the, the next one that I'm closest on is the how, but, um, I've been using, and maybe he meant PSE. I'm, 
I've, I've been using the PSC one so far. It's that conversion from the hydroelectric to the full mechanical hydraulic. And uh, that's, that's been working great. Um, it's, it's different, you know, you gotta get used to it, but it's got plenty of power. It's the big box with the pump and everything and the ram assist, so yeah, good stuff. Time for one more question. Sure. And there will be some questions that you can address offline. Sure. Um, yeah. Jesse Davis, will the will the fastback tops work on the LJ standard case? Will the fastback top? Fastback top. Uh, yeah, that's what Andrew has. LJ standard but case. But with the metal ones, it's right. like a longer fastback top, not roof. Oh, oh, the aluminum roof? No. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So the the question was, will the the best top Trek top, which is kind of a fastback looking top, it's also frameless, I believe, um, work on our standard LJ roll cage? Yes, is the answer. Um, it's tight. You got to want it. <laughs> um, you know, I, I personally, I want the space. Like, if I buy a big vehicle, whether it's a JK or a LJ, I, I want the extra storage in there, but people like that look, and Andrew's one of them, and he's got it on there. If you're not familiar with that Jeep, go check out our gallery. Pay Dirt is the name of that Jeep. Uh, check it out. We got a ton of pictures on there, and uh, that's a if you're an LJ lover, you will go out of your mind. It's also featured in Four Low Magazine this month, so check that out too. All right, yeah. Jeff. Any anything? Any last minutes that? No. no? Okay. Thanks, everybody. We are grateful for you to watch our program. We hope that this has been very informative. We will be back on Thursday with more good information.